is not me. I'm standing in for Bubli today. Uh, unfortunately, Bubli couldn't come. Um, it's an un unlucky situation here at Fostum if you have uh, kids. Um, so um, we were trying for a number of years to uh, to get some at least some self-help room here, but it's all kind of complicated. So this year, Bubli said, I'm not going to look after my kid on the on the dirty corridors, and she stayed home and sent me. So all the errors and mistakes are mine and the good stuff is from Bubli. Um, we're working for CIB, um, this is our company, and this talk is about um, accessibility, mostly for um, developers, um, but um, I think it's a topic broad enough and there's so much to do that I think it should, uh, there should be something for everybody um, to take away. First of all, um, accessibility. Who knows what that is in this context? Anyone? Stefan, I know you know it. I know you know it. <laughs> so, um, um, well, let's, uh, let's check Wikipedia. Um, <laughs> but in, in, in the context of software, it's, uh, it's, um, it's mostly used um, for uh, technology or uh, some, some part of a program that is there to make um, a computer or a technical device usable um, by or easier usable by a person with a disability or impairment. And um, these days, I'm actually talking about disabilities. So, um, well, we, 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 tend, we, we try to avoid that, so we, we rather talk about accessible software or accessible rooms or accessible, I don't know, restrooms or, or toilets or something. So that's, that's accessibility in this context. Um, what, um, what this is all about is that doing something that is accessible in software land these days is not particularly hard. So it's most, the problem is rather not that it's hard to do. The problem is rather uh, that people are not aware of it, um, what to look for, um, what not to do, or rather what to do. Um, and um, you don't have to have any disabilities to, to be able to, to do something, to check something, uh, to make something accessible. Um, and this is more or less a pep talk to encourage all of you, first of all, to tell you how to do it and then encourage you um, to do uh, stuff that is accessible from the get-go and not um, that then people need to write bugs about and then um, laboriously fix it afterwards. So, um, yeah, wh why, why don't we do it uh, from, from in, in the first place? Um, so, first of all, at least that's true for me, I'm mostly not aware of the things. So, um, since I... I, I'm not impaired, my, my vision is not impaired, I, I don't know, my, my motor skills are not um, impaired. I tend not to notice if I do something, especially in the user interface, that is not accessible. Um, so this is awareness. I need to know what to look for. Uh, second problem is um, that there's always too little time. So either if you're a volunteer and it's already... Uh, I don't know, two o'clock in the morning and you just want this patch merged um, or if you are on a contract then it's always too little time, too little money and too much to do. And your user experience and accessibility tend to be secondary concerns. And that's sad and it doesn't have to be like that. Um, and the third problem and that kind of ties into this awareness issue is that development teams tend not to be particularly diverse. Um, so again, people are not, tend not to be aware of what they're doing there. Um, yeah, but let's change that. So let's make people aware. Um, so um, we all can do something. This is a little uh, motivational image here. Uh, Bubli loves those. Um, so you can all of us, we, we can all test for um, accessibility things or, or problems. I will talk about that a bit later, what, what to do. Um, what else can we do? We can, we can uh, file bugs if we find something so that development becomes aware of it. Um, 
We can fix quite a number of easy things directly in Glade, which is the UI editor for LibreOffice. Um, and last but not least, um, of course, if, if we're hacking, then we can also tackle perhaps the, the more challenging uh, problems that are only fixable if, if you touch code. Um, good, so um, that's the, that's the how-to, what to do. Four simple steps um, to get um, quite a long way towards something that is usable for most um, um, people in, in need of accessible software. Magnifying glass. Um, so you can, um, and, and you're usually in your desktop environment on Linux or on Windows, you can increase the font size for the, for the user interface. Do that and check if things still look okay. Nothing is cut off. Everything is somehow, even if you need to scroll a bit or if you need to um, 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 move things a bit around, but it's still that you can get <coughs> to the uh, user interface controls, that nothing is hidden, nothing is cut off. Um, there were a number of very obvious bugs, like really absolutely bleedingly obvious. For example, in Calc, um, this, uh, those sheet, um, uh, those sheet menus, uh, those those uh, tapped sheet uh, names, they were just not scaling with the font size. There was a hard limit there, so if you scaled the font above, I don't know, 15 or, or 16 point, it would just be not reacting anymore. So the rest of the the user interface would scale, <coughs> but not that one. <coughs> Uh, same story with menus. Um, if you uh, make your font, your, your user interface font large enough, suddenly the menu wouldn't fit the screen anymore. So if you want to uh, change the, the font back, well, you're out of luck because uh, tools, options, you can't access that anymore. Um, there was another fix um, that went in to 6.0. Um, so that you get this expander icon. So you can just click on that and get, get the rest of the menu um, still displayed. All of that is like bloody obvious, but you have to actually scale up the, um, the UI font to notice that. Um, keyboard navigation. Keyboard navigation is, um, is a very, very, very good example for something that um, benefits everybody. I mean, at least it benefits me and I guess many other people who really don't like to um, push the mouse around all day and, and rely on, on keyboard. Um, so making sure that LibreOffice is keyboard accessible, it's great for power users, it's great for hackers, and it's also great for people with accessibility needs. Um, how to do that? Um, first of all, um, we need uh, to make sure that um, controls have either the control itself or the control label um, has a mnemonic label so that you can press Alt and this, this label character and then you, get to be, you can get to that control. Um, so, uh, and it's also, when you do that, you get something for free, which is um, proper screen reader output. Because the screen reader, if, if you do those labels, um, uh, control labels correctly, and then we'll get to that in, in the next slide, but if you do that correctly, um, the screen reader notices, oh, this is a label for this rather complex list box here, and it tells you what this list box is. And if you don't set this label properly, then the, the screen reader reads some weird uh, gobbledygook um, internal names. Um, but, well, again, it's something that you, that's something that you can test by, um, um, by using a screen reader. If you don't want to do that, the next thing is just check if the uh, if the mnemonic labels are all set. P parts of that, I think that there might be another talk about that, parts of that can be automated. So you can have something like a, um, like a regression testing script that kind of makes sure that uh, user interface uh, elements ha follow a number of constraints. Um, but it's also something that you can just be aware of. Like if you do UI, just be aware of it. Um, make sure if you put the label there that it gets the, um, the mnemonic character and that it gets this association with the 
uh, with the actual control. Um, so, yes, how, how, to, how to do that? So you... Um, That it's a good example of something that is not really accessible enough. So what should have happened is so um Oh yeah, well, this is probably because, uh, mm, let me use, let me use a 6 O. So now I press, uh, if you can see that from behind, if I'm pressing Alt, I'm, I'm now getting the, those mnemonic characters here. So if I now add the E, I get this, um, the second entry box there highlighted. So um, it's easy to do. Just if you're hacking UI, check if, if this actually works. Uh, Good. Um, second thing to do if you're um, if you're doing that, um, make sure that this association is um, correctly set up. Um, so for that, we need late. Um, And we need to get it to the foreground. And for that, maybe I need to... So, this is a, this is a LibreOffice dialog that I've loaded here. Um, it's an Impress dialog, slide transition panel. And um, highlighted here is the, is this a bit uh, bigger control that has a label. This one here. So those, those two should be um, associated with each other. So what, what, what you need to do for the label is first of all click this use underline that enables this feature with the, uh, with the um, mnemonic character and then you need to associate that with, a, with the actual complex uh, UI control. And this is the sound list and you get some, some selection here from, um, so if this is correctly set here, but if it wouldn't be, you can click on this edit button and you get the selection um, box with all the controls in that dialog and then you pick the right one and set it there and then it's associated and laid. And then you save it and send a patch to Garrett. Okay. Good, and that's what I mentioned. Um, so there's going to be a, um, some, some work there to, to check that automatically. The thing is, you can check automatically, but you can't really fix that automatically. So that, that's still some, some manual work there um, to fix it up. Um, but <coughs> it's, a, it's a, a known problem, and it's going to be worked on. Um, next one is um, um, to navigate UI um, between not only in a single dialog, but if you have the the full LibreOffice UI, um, uh, so the the trick is always press F6. So now you see the menu bar is highlighted. I press it again. Now it's the first toolbar. Now the second toolbar, third, and now I think I'm in the yes. Now I'm in the document. So make sure that this is a, a 
functioning cycle so that you, in the end you end up there at the beginning. There's a bug in impress um, when you have um, the slide layout panel open, you get stuck there. So you, you, you can enter but you can never leave. Um, like Hotel California, uh, which is a nice place to be, but um, maybe not for, uh, for a blind person who then can't get the cursor out again. So just, again, being aware of that, just play with that. If you, if you notice it doesn't work, file a bug, or if you're a hacker, go fix it. Um, oh, we've time-wise... Um, so yeah, this is um, F6, and um, when you are in, in those toolbars or in, in the document, inside that, it's like in, inside the dialog, so you can tap travel um, between the controls. Um, check if every widget accepts the keyboard focus so that you can type something there. And probably more important, if you change things, does the order of traversal still make sense? Or is it the, the, the focus jumping all over the place? Um, okay, this is more for, for the hackers. So if, you <clears throat> if you're hacking a user interface, make sure you set the right flags on your, on your controls, on your windows. So um, for, um, for, for a control, for something that, that can accept keyboard input, make sure you have this tab, stop flag set. For something that is a control um, container, like the, the outer container of a control, make sure this dialog control flag is set. And um, for something that is a bit more complex, like for example, <clears throat> a list box that itself contains controls again, like um, to, um, the extension manager has this rather complex list box where you have this enable, disable buttons, in, in, in per entry. So those complex um, controls that need uh, a tap traveling, focus traveling inside, they need this um, child dialog control flag. <coughs> yeah, this is a number of um, <coughs> assorted bugs here that part of them, um, part of them were uh, fixed, part of them are still there. I mentioned this um, problem with the impress um, uh, side panel where you can get stuck with your uh, with your f six f six and um yeah the last one let's maybe skip that in favor of questions of course um non textual content like document content uh should better be accessible as well, so that means for pictures for videos some useful um, alternative text, some some uh, some label that, that a user knows what that sh what that should be, and there's a good example. New score extension does it wonderfully. Um, the default um, that we have in Writer is not so great because when you insert a picture, you're not give, you're, you're not getting e prompted even. It would be pretty easy um, to to prompt the user when it's inserting uh, a, a, an image anyway. Preset perhaps with a file name so that people can click it away if they, if they don't care so much, but at least give the option there. Okay, um, I think we're running pretty much out of time. Um, so the answer to questions is not no, but, but uh, it's a funny picture. So um, let's open for questions, quickly. Anyone? I would make an addition so that you do not have to say yes or no. Um, the design team uh, worked on a, a guideline uh, for the side part to go with uh, iPad, uh, how to travel through the sidebar, which has the, a, a lot of c controls, and you don't want to press tap, tap, tap to go from first control to something on, on the end. It is um, a complex thing, and uh, just uh, it is on our wiki. Uh, wiki is a design sidebar. Can you, can you send me a link to that? So um, those slides have. Um, uh, uh, annotations, they have notes, and I'm going to insert that link there, and I'm going to upload the slides after this talk 
to the FOSDEM uh, pages so you can find it there from, from the program, from the DevRoom program. And I'm going to add uh, that link. Good. Thank you. Yes? So the question is, are there any good screen readers to, uh, to be used for, for developers? So I think NVDA would be a very good uh, screen reader, I suspect. But that's not, I'm, I'm not the, the, the expert here. I mean, maybe someone from the audience can recommend something here. So the, the answer was Orca, Orca on Linux, uh, and Orca, yeah, not Oracle. Or, Orca yes, and uh, NVDA on Windows and VoiceOver on Mac, which just comes with the operating system. Okay, sorry, we are out of time. Happy to answer questions uh, outside um, or later. Thank you so much.